the next house I'm actually quite excited to share with you as well because on this one, once again, we've done something really different again and we are always trying to push the boundaries of architecture and design in order to create amazing spaces um, and amazing transitions of space inside and outside. And I'll show you just how we have done it on this one. On this particular home, we had similar restrictions to what we had on the knife's edge. The site is actually not a regular shape. So the site in this particular one is almost shaped like a diamond and it has many, many angles to the site. So what one then tries to do is um, you try to do the layout of the plan so that the layout is not disjointed. Uh, trying to follow too many of the lines of the boundaries um, can actually sometimes disturb the design and create spaces which are very difficult to, um, you know, to, to, to put furniture and beds and things into it. So what we've done in this particular home, once again, we've kept the design of the uh, the house very linear and rectangular to the boundaries on two sides and what that did in this particular design it actually flared the design open so you have two uh, linear arms uh, that are that's actually flared open and then in that centralized space in this particular case we actually put a double volume lounge So in this case, the lounge being double volume and being actually extruded open in that uh, configuration, you actually lose the sense of the fact that that space is not rectangular because it is so big and it's double volume. And in this particular space, we actually did stacking doors that actually open across the entire double volume. So when you enter into that space, it is completely open all the way from floor to ceiling, which is probably close to eight meters. We have the full width of that opening, which is approximately 12 meters. And then that flows directly out onto your entertainment area and your garden in that space. So it's going to look absolutely as amazing when you walk into that. And we will share a view with you with what that is going to look like. <laughs> As we previously uh, discussed, we love that blurring of the boundary of the inside and outside. And in this particular home, we did exactly that. But in this home, we actually changed it slightly because first of all, in this space, we have got the roof that extends about four meters over the top of where the home actually ends. So it creates quite a big space on the outside um, that when you are visually on the inside, uh, because the roof extends over, you actually don't know where the house ends at the bottom. And with those stacks, doors it will open that space up completely so it'll really create the illusion that that space is actually outside although it is actually completely inside So tell me what you think about uh, this design of the lounge and actually opening that space up fully over the two levels as we have done it. In this particular home, because we are always 
trying to see how we can change architecture and how we can actually step away from the norm uh, that is created within architecture. And something which uh, we get often is obviously you'll get two double garages which are facing the road and generally the execution on the garages would be the same so they kind of mimic the same um, architectural style. Um, but what we've actually done in this one is we've taken style from the house and the two entrances to the garages are actually slightly different. What we've done uh, on the right hand side is we've actually grounded that side so made it a bit more solid and earthy and we've actually cladded it in stone so it actually feels heavy and grounded on that side and on the opposite side we've taken the lighter and more delicate elements of the roof and we've cantilevered that across and we've tapered those roofs so that it actually looks light and airy almost like it's floating um, in that side and we've brought in a lot of windows on that side so that side is very fragmented as opposed to the very solid side that we've created on the other side. So as you're driving past the home, you would probably not really even see that the one side is a garage and the other side not. Yeah, your eye will immediately uh, assume it to be something else unless you actually take a slightly closer look to that. So it, it removes that monotonous duplication of the two spaces which you would generally just design the same. So sometimes the design of the home becomes quite a complex shape because you have different rooms and spaces that you are trying to combine together and those spaces sometimes create jagged ed edges on the outside of the design. And uh, in this case what we try and do is by pulling the roof over that section, you actually in visually you unify that entire facade because your, your eye picks up the bigger picture first and then after that it breaks it down into the smaller detail as you pick up windows, cladding and stuff like that. So when you look at it, it's actually you get the, the bigger picture which is the floating uh, cantilever roof and then you'll see okay it's fragmented, it's broken out down into this different spaces creating a cantilever here, creating voids in this space and then you get that three-dimensionality of that space that actually speaks to you when you look at the design. What we did in this particular design with that roof that actually cantilevers over kind of like uh, uniting or unifying the look of the facade um, we didn't want that roof to become too imposing. So what we did there is we actually cut uh, holes into that and then we actually put diagonal uh, slats across that section so that it's not a complete open void. Uh, so you still get that transparency of that uh, void that we've cut through it so your eye picks up that it's not this big heavy imposing roof um, but it, it's got some element of transparency to it and it, it just breaks down that massing that you may get at the top that may be a bit too imposing. Something that we also did on this home is we wanted one feature to kind of look like it's supporting all of these cantilever roofs. So we actually did a cross element uh, uh, construction as, as a column and these columns actually support uh, so you'll see on the, uh, the front side where the swimming pool is on that side we've actually done it as over a double volume so it actually supports from the ground the roof that is at the top it intersects a slab in the on the ground on the first floor level and it actually supports that slab within the same framework so you get this big cross going up to the top, but in, in the intermediate section, it actually is carrying another slab in that section. What we did on the front of the house, which is now, and I'm talking about the front now, this time on the entrance side, um, on that side, um, we actually, because we've got very solid sections that are supporting, um, you know, the cantilevers, we've actually introduced the same effect, but in LED lighting, and you will see it uh, visually on the 3Ds that we're presenting to you now.
The reason for uh, the cross shape is it's just different to your standard conventional column and we're trying to break away from supporting elements which is just a normal column because it is just it's so overused you know that we're trying to find something which is uh, dynamic and, uh, and not within the normal realm of, of a home necessarily you know that it, it's dynamic and it's different and people go oh well, okay hang on a second someone has actually thought about what they're doing here it's not just a column we're saying how do we support it but make it a feature within the house so you're actually utilizing it you know to your benefit at the end of the day and not just um, it for form follows function. Any column that is at an angle, um, your forces are a lot different to what they are on a vertical column. So it does uh, complicate the structure a little bit um, when you do it at an angle, but if the engineers design it in, so if he knows that it's there, it's not complicated because he designs it for, for it like that. Afterwards, if you want to do a column at an angle, then it could become a challenge for the structure. You know? So it would be interesting to hear from our subscribers what they think about this uh, idea of the columns not being vertical, but actually utilizing it in a decorative effect rather than just in a structural effect. If you like our reveals, subscribe, like, and we look forward to seeing you at the next one.